Hello, this is Communicate, Connect, Grow, the Open Strategy Partners podcast. G'day, g'day. This is Communicate, Connect, Grow, the Open Strategy Partners podcast. My name is Jeffrey A. McGuire. Most people call me Jam. I am with Felicity Brand. We are at a company called Open Strategy Partners, where we do strategic product communication. And we think a lot about strategy and we think a lot about communication. We've started a podcast because we want to share our thinking and share the thinking of our friends and peers and colleagues And we want to learn and we want to show you what we're up to and we want to talk about this kicking things off because it was really hard choosing where to kick things off because there's a lot going on. We decided to talk about editing copy. So editing is when someone's written something and you need to sort of bring it up to the delivery level or the level where you want to show your client. So in the phase of our work, and I'll make this super short, so Open Strategy Partners, we're a group of technologists and communicators. And when we think about communication with our clients, hopefully over time, we want to enable you to do this as well. We have a strategic framework that's a lot of classic marketing stuff with a few bits that we've thrown in of our own. And we come up with We want to talk about the official line, right, is communicate, connect, grow. We want to help you communicate the value of what you do to the people who need to know about it to help you grow. So we do a bunch of strategic planning to understand who you need to say what to and in what ways. And then we get on with planning the writing and we have a structure around that and we write it. And then at some point, somebody gets to edit it and there come in our Editing codes. You do a bunch of editing at OSP yes. Felicity. Yes, I do. Why don't you introduce yourself to us? Tell us who you are and what you do and how editing codes feature in your day. G'day, everyone. I'm Felicity. I do do a lot of editing in my role at OSP, and that I would say is primarily because I'm asynchronous. So, because I'm based in Melbourne, Australia, it makes sense for me to edit my colleagues' writing while they're asleep so that they can wake up and have their, have their work um, reviewed by me and they can review my review and, and get on with their day. Um, these editing codes that we're talking about, they were new to me when I started at OSP two years ago and they took a little bit of getting used to. And that's because initially – They seemed like a little bit of overhead, a bit of extra work that I had to do. It's very easy for me as a writer to skim through what someone else has written and try and improve it. But these codes help me to give feedback because I'm tying it back to one of the writing principles, one of the writing guidelines that we have at OSP. Not only are they a great tool for me as a writer and an editor, they can also be a very useful tool for someone who maybe doesn't write as a day job. So you might be a developer and you've got to review something that maybe someone in your marketing team has written or vice versa. You may be in the marketing team, your dev has written something, you need to review it. These codes can be your friend. So Jam, I don't know if I answered your question. I really... (laughs) I think you answered it wonderfully. And the cliche tech industry way to describe what you said is like, we have follow the sun editorial services. But the beautiful thing is that we can do these handoffs and all of the things that we do, we have sort of modular processes that have a number of steps in them that we try to define and keep clear. Because they're well-defined, we can hand them off to each other. And it's really a wonderful bonus to have someone significantly offset in in the time zone who's who's so great at the job. Um, in Cologne, Cologne is the... Uh, is the place where there's the legend of the Heinzelmännchen. And the Heinzelmännchen are the little elves that would help the tradespeople finish their jobs overnight. So you know the story of the shoemaker who leaves all his stuff on the bench and gets up in the morning and then their shoes done and everything? That was in Cologne, that story. And there's even a there's a fountain downtown that, uh, that celebrates them. So 
for a company that got started in Cologne, Germany, you are our first official Heinzelmännchen, and we can put that on your business card if you uh, if you would like. Great. Oh, yeah, just a T-shirt. That would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that we can make that happen. <laughs> The editing codes are one of the things that we came up with ourselves based on some of my experience becoming a writer, becoming a professional writer, and some of my frustrations with how that works in my experience. So I would have the experience of getting some sort of writing assignment, blog about this thing, or make this article, or here, you, you've got a you've got a slot in a magazine, what do you want to write about? And I would say something, and they'd say, okay, give us X words. And then in all of these cases, I would write something and then sort of metaphorically chuck it over the wall and and I might see something back where my boss had time to look at 20% of it and then got distracted or I might never see it again and it comes out with my name under it somewhere in public and it's not what I wrote and it my ideas got turned around and changed or it's better or I don't agree or it's worse but it's just a total black box and things disappeared so early in the days of the company we were trying to define what is quote unquote good writing you know what's what are best practices and and how do we share the work and there's a, a number of things that we are going to talk about over time um one of the things is the writing process is very structured so we have things that we call briefs where you fill in who the target audience is what the challenges that they're having that we're addressing with that communication where we want them to to go read more or what we want them to do next and so on less experienced writers it's hard to write and less experienced writers really, really struggle to get the words out sometimes. And we, we recognize and we respect that effort. And it's really hard if you're not used to living in the editorial process, it's really hard to get your writing back. And it's just like all red lines and all rearranged and just so different. And it's hard to let go of your babies, your words, that thing that you just struggled so much with. And maybe you think that the article's better for it, but if you don't understand why, then how do you write better the next time? So I wanted to get rid of the black box and I wanted to be able to teach and I wanted to be able to learn. So I wanted to turn the, the ed writing and editorial process into an exchange between peers and I wanted to turn it into a, a learning process. So if I'm editing your text, Felicity, and you give me something and we at OSP, we never say, this was wrong and now it's right. This was yours, now it's corrected. We say, you're original and here's my suggestion or here's a revision or based on our principles and our documentation, you know, we don't generally, we prefer not to do this thing. So here's what I'm suggesting. You could take any one of my suggestions about a choice of words, a turn of phrase, whatever it is, and you can say, boom, yes, I agree. That makes my piece better. Thank you. You can say, you know what? No, I don't. I think I want to take that one because X, Y, Z. And even though there's no change, and even though we may disagree, you've thought about this, and you 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 have a why you think it's better, and so it's been justified. And then we should generally accept that, or you know, duke it out, which one of one of the other one of the other. And in a third case, and this happens to me a lot, I write something, I get a suggestion back, and you know, hey, presto, I see there's a third way that's even better than both. And so working together significantly improves all of our output. And it's really, it's really gratifying. And it's not a mystery anymore. And you can learn to be a better writer. And frankly, you can learn to be a much better editor because you have to communicate why you did something along the way. And we worked in one more thing. Can you tell us about your experience of this, and especially with what we call the positivity pass? The way we have our collection of codes, we have structured them according to the general phases of editing, which, Jam, you like to talk about as a, a Russian doll analogy, but I'll let you talk about that. So the positivity pass is there are no red pens, as you say. We do like to recognise the amount of work that goes into crafting a written piece. So the positivity pass is really important. It plays into the ethos of OSP and that is that you, you read the piece through in its entirety and you call out the pieces that are bang on, that are particularly well written, that really nail perhaps the brief, uh, the, the call to action. So that helps, well, it gives the writer a boost for a start. Everyone likes to see that their work is recognised. It also, I guess, reinforces when a writer is doing something well. We want 
them to continue doing things that way. And I suppose it does just show the writer that as the editor, they're not just picking out all the things that need to be improved. We have we have yes. read it and considered it and recognized the effort, really. If we have a given code, color might be one where it's like, so in the positivity pass, we can use all of our codes and we write plus plus in the comments and then the code and say, I love this turn of phrase. Wow. Or, you know, your, you know, metaphor about a log jam, you know, in the process was so fantastic. And let's extend that across the whole article. And the other thing as an editor, we do do significant structural changes and like really get into things sometimes. And um, we work in suggestion mode in Google Docs and it ends up looking like nothing original is there, even when it's not true. Marking things that we liked out of the gate also helps the editor not destroy the good work that the author has put into this. And I think that's really important. So in terms of editing process, I call it the Russian doll because we have our brief, which I mentioned before, and that tells me what the article should be about and what it should cover. And I can look and I can say it at the broadest level, I can scan it and I can say, well, I think it hit all the topics. And I think that for now, the call to action makes sense, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to reassess that right at the end. And then I'm going to look at the, so that's the scope of, of what we do. And then I'm going to look at the narrative structure. Does this make logical sense to go from A to B to C, D? And is there anything that's extraneous there? Then the next phase is flow and readability. So then I really start reading is, is it well written enough? Are there transitions between the sections? Are they well done and so forth? And on down to style and phrasing and specific word choice at the smallest level. So I picture these I picture these Russian dolls. You know, there's some tricks along the way that I've learned. For example, basically, I try to write the, if I'm writing a draft of something, I try to write the introduction first based on the information in the brief and then plan out my sections and write all of that and then write the conclusion. And basically, by the time I've written the conclusion, either that actually becomes the introduction and I write a different conclusion, or I chuck out the original introduction and I write another one because I'm never in the zone enough at the beginning of the process to really nail what we have to get right up top. And as web writers, there's a bunch of, you know, it's not just not burying the lead. It's sort of getting keywords and key concepts and and how is that going to fit into the meta description um, for the search results and all those extra wonderful things that we have to worry about in this day and age. So that's the Russian doll. That's the positivity pass comes somewhere right at the beginning of that, like in the first read. I think in reality, Felicity, I bet you don't do that in that order every time, right? No, not every time. I guess it depends if I'm familiar with the writer. Certainly if it's a piece I've written, a piece that I'm reviewing, perhaps that a client has written, I will, I guess, be a little bit more formal about my workflow because I want to respect the writer, as we said before, who may not have writing as their day job. They may be a UX designer. But certainly I, um, I'm very familiar with our collection of codes now and I I'm so used to doing this workflow that, yes, I think I am um, pretty good at working in a positivity pass at the same time as um, editing the main, the main piece. As I said, one of my goals was to have a process that was open and flexible and transparent and kind of honest and an exchange between peers. We would like to share what we do. So we are planning a series of kind of mini episodes of the podcast where we're going to introduce and discuss briefly each and all of our codes. And the codes are still definitely a living, breathing system. I think we might retire a couple. I think there's a couple missing. Maybe you'll help us discover which ones are missing. So on the one hand, please subscribe to this thing to hear about all of these editing codes. Plus, we're going to talk much, much more about our writing, editing, and communication practices. We're going to have interesting guests on, and we're going to have entire episodes about strategy and planning and leadership. So in the end, we're going to talk, we're going to have communicate, connect, and grow sort of sub-themes. Communicate is all about everything about communication, and connection is meeting interesting peers and leaders and thinkers in technology, in communication, and so on. And Grow is all about our strategic practices. So I'm pretty excited about that. If you would like to learn more about how to be a better writer and a better communicator, 
before we get all of these different codes out and all of these materials onto our website, you're really, really welcome to get in touch with us. Our website is obviously openstrategypartners.com. You can email us hello at openstrategypartners.com. You can find us on Twitter. We're at open underscore strategy. And what we have to offer is a series of writer enablement workshops where we can take you through in a, in a few hours. We can take you through everything from uh, a brief strategic overview through the conceptual use of the brief and into content production, choosing channels, doing the writing and the right editing, the writing and editing. And along with that, we'll be very uh, happy to share with you a full list of these codes as we have them now and the, the writing documentation and so on. So uh, we're really, really excited about enabling you to do this yourself and to do better and to communicate better the value of what you do to the people who need to hear about it. And we're putting all of this up on the website and into these podcasts as we go. But I think it's going to take a while because it's been a while building and practicing it. Anyway, I'm pretty excited about that. I have one kind of cute workshop story about that. Would you like to hear it, Felicity? I'd love to, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the amount of eye roll that you worked into that one was <laughs> in stiff competition with, with my then 16-year-old daughter who, you know, was starting to get over me. So tell us an anecdote, Felicity. <laughs> Look, I don't have an anecdote. I would just like to touch on the idea of um, editing being a conversation. So it's not a hierarchical positioning of writer being underneath the big scary editor. You mentioned we use Google Docs, we use suggestion mode, and we use comments. And any edit I make, I always revisit to see if the author has responded or, or what their take on it was because it, it really is a, a, a two-way street. You know, I'm really excited about these particular series of the podcast, The Editing Codes, and I really hope people will join us for a deep dive in a mini episode to learn more about how to apply them because I think it's really interesting. I hope other people want to nerd out with us about words. So one time we did a writer enablement workshop at a client's office in Germany. And uh, it's a wonderful client and they, they, they're they very good communicators and they have a really nice company culture. And we had we did sort of strategic pre preparation in the morning and designed a bunch of briefs and then had people write draft articles. And then in the afternoon, we had their sort of writing partner, like they swapped articles and then they were, then they were supposed to, you know, edit each other. So we had this page of, it varies from month to month, but, you know, it's been anywhere between 50 and 80 editing codes in our list. And <laughs> the two founders of this company had each other's articles. And one of them literally had a page of 70 codes and went through the article, I guess, 70 times looking at each code and where he could possibly use it. And it was just like, okay. And it's so systematic and it's so German. And it's like, I trust a tech company that is that thorough, right? Like he was doing quality testing on this thing. <laughs> but it was like, it was... It was kind of amazing and it was really beautiful. And the article came out pretty well. I, I hope they learned something, right? And the, the way we have these things listed, there's a short bit of documentation next to each one. And, and we're kind of expanding on that documentation now as we start to publish these on our website. Do you have a favorite editing code, Felicity, or two? Ooh, we have obvious ones. Lead, don't bury the lead. What else have I got? List, it's good to um, break out your points into a list format to um, for readability. My favourite one and, would be... And a close relative of list is wall. Wall is... is um, So we have, we have another set of concepts that we're going to touch on a lot. So we think about empathy and clarity and trust when we communicate. And in terms of clarity, the wall code is a hint not to write a wall of text. Use lists, use block quotes, uh, write another header, because too many words at once are, you know, too many words. Exactly. It's it's hard to choose a favourite. How, how do you choose your favourite child, Jam? No, they're not my children. But um, 
they all get used apart from maybe one or two and they're all useful. Um, I think they're all meaningful. So I'm not giving an example, am I? Packs, avoid violent communication. You used colour, uh, crisp, try to keep your points concise think, and... Yeah, and, and colourful, right? Snappy. Mm. The one that I want to introduce is FUD, F-U-D. OSP doesn't use um, fear or uncertainty or doubt in, in their writing. So um, I've often wanted to sometimes call that out in written, written pieces, but we didn't have a code. And now we do. Yeah. That goes that goes hand in hand with the idea that, well, OSP, ha- we've made a series of mindful choices over the time that we've been working together, and we have decided not to do negative communication. We won't create copy for you that criticizes the competition. We will help you turn whatever your thinking is into highlighting the positive of the value of what you do, the benefits of using it, the the good points, and so on. And we are happy to talk about the the competition or make a comparison or what have you, but we're not interested in 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 negativity. So, mm-hmm. but I really love the code. I really love the code Spock. Spock. Because the I code... knew you were going to say. I don't know which way it is, but yeah. Yes, because Spock means, Spock is like, be logical, <laughs> right? Put it in mm-hmm. a logical order. Make <laughs> sure you, you, you explain yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Avoid logical fallacies. Um, that's a great one. I do like Spock. So I'm pretty excited about this podcast. I'm pretty excited about our work. And I'm, I'm, I'm really, really grateful to be working with you and all of our colleagues, Felicity. Let us do the... Wrap up the episode quiz. So if people want to learn more about communication from us, what can they do? They could go to the website, openstrategypartners.com. They could email us, hello, at openstrategypartners.com. They could hit us up on Twitter, open underscore strategy. And in any of those channels, they could get in touch to talk with us about our writer enablement workshops. And if you have any other questions about how we work, those channels are great. If you would like to suggest a topic or talk with us or whatever, got questions about this already, we'd really, really love to hear them. So Felicity, I think it's beer o'clock in Melbourne right now. It sure is. And over here, it's definitely next espresso o'clock. So At the sound of the French Canadian guitars, that was our brand new Open Strategy Partners OSP podcast, Communicate, Communicate, Connect, connect, grow. Grow. See you next time, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Felicity. Bye-bye. And that's a wrap. Thanks for listening in to Communicate, Connect, Grow, the Open Strategy Partners podcast. We hope you found it useful, helpful, inspiring, or all of the above. If you did find it any of those things, please hit subscribe and leave a review in the podcast platform of your choice. If you didn't, I promise the next episode is going to be awesome. So check it out. Address all complaints to the A1A Car Wash in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Subscribe to Communicate, Connect, Grow on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at open underscore strategy. If you have any questions or suggestions, get in touch. Our email is hello at openstrategypartners.com. Thanks to the whole OSP team for helping get this off the ground and being wonderful colleagues and excellent human beings. You'll be hearing more from them as we build out this channel. A big thank you to our house band, Patrick Gaumont, for the fantastic original theme music based on the traditional French-Canadian lullaby J'ai une oignon sur la tête, je suis un honneur. And thanks also to Mike Snow for the additional horn arrangements. This has been Communicate, Connect, Grow, the OSP podcast. <laughs>